Okay, thank you, thank you for coming. Wait, what's happening? Don't play yet. Play? No, not yet. Go back. Wrong cue, video. Wrong cue. New venue. You've got to teach them. So I have a mysterious guest who disappeared for half an hour. Anthony Zemikowski is going to come and join us from YouTube. Big round of applause for YouTube. Good evening. This is a real stage. I feel like I should be doing some kind of show later. So we're going to get blinded. Uh, let's just thank you all for coming and thank you for Bizu uh, for offering this venue. Uh, for those of you who like watching dancing, you can stay till 9.30. Turn the music down, man. You can stay till 9.30, and there's going to be a little show here by Anthony right? and the girls. So who, who hasn't been to Web Wednesday before? Please put your hand up. Welcome. Jay, welcome. You've never been before. I've never seen you before. Who are you? I hear you're famous on the internet. Uh, and who, who came because uh, they got my email? Email still works. Oh. Twitter? Who came because of Twitter? Who came because of Facebook? Who came because of YouTube? Yay! <laughs> Alright, so I want to thank some sponsors. There's been a reel here. It's a bit, it's a bit messed up. So, if you've been lucky enough, uh, you would have got a free drink from Jigo City. Where is the Jigo City people? Where are you? Put your hands up. They're handing out free drinks. Have you got any left? Yes. Yes. Jigo City. They're sponsoring a round of drinks. Go and talk to Vienna. She'll, she'll give you a round of drinks. And then, uh, obviously, we also have Bizu. If you're hungry, you can order food. Slightly different from Vola. You can get a menu and order food. ADMA, K, are you here? K, the ADMA, the Asia Digital Marketing Association. Where are you? At the back. She's handing out reports. Good girl. And then SES Hong Kong. Who knows what SES stands for? Put your hand up. You're going to get a free drink if you put your hand up. What does SES stand for? Get it wrong. <laughs> uh, search engine strategies. There you go. Exactly. Right. Is that right? Yes. Okay, there we go. So, how many of you have been to SES in Hong Kong or another country before? This spotlight really is powerful. How many? Four. Come on. All right. 22nd, 21st of September. In Hong Kong, in... We're going to have a few words from SES, alright? So we're going to ask Christoph from Incisive Media, who own SES, to come forward. Can I ask one thing first? Could you just quieten down a little bit? Shh. Shh. Uh, Tony, who's in charge of the dancers, told me that if you're really loud, I can pinpoint you and you can join the dance troupe later, Jay, alright? So if you want to dance later, keep talking. If you don't, please listen. So a few words from SES. Hi everybody, I'm Christoph with SES, the ultimate search and social marketing event. Going to be held here on September 21 and 22. The event is designed for people like you to, as an educational opportunity to learn the latest and greatest tips and tricks on being more effective. Uh, the event is a two-day event. We have a series of keynote addresses, plenary panel sessions. Um, it's divided up into three tracks, one being for beginners, the other being an accelerator for the advanced people, and then we also cover the latest, greatest hot topics. Um, some of the highlights that we're going to have, we'll have a... Um, We'll cover B2B lead generation. Um, we'll have a special plenary address, a practical guide to marketing and making money through social media, which is a Dell case study. And we will also have an executive interview on how Facebook has changed the world with the APAC um, marketing director from Facebook. 
some of the companies that will be speaking will have Yahoo, Facebook, Alibaba, Nokia, Sasa, Dell, Nielsen, Ogilvy, just to name a few, and more importantly, we'll even have Napoleon speaking, he'll be moderating a panel. And the good news is all of you are eligible for a discount of friends and family of Web Wednesday. So see myself or Pablo Napoleon for the discount code and you can all register to get the discount. So thank you very much. Thanks, Napoleon. Okay, cool. Thanks. Man. I can see you're already a rowdy crowd, so the venue has absolutely fuck all to do with how much you talk. So I'm going to use my second strategy, which is to swear every other word. And I know there's a game to see how many times I say the word fuck, so I've said it twice. Let's see how many times I can say it. So, just a few, a few, a few um, bits of information. The next Web Wednesday is going to be on September the 21st. I am currently negotiating <laughs> with the speakers, but it's highly likely we're going to be talking about mobile payments. Unfortunately, the people who want to talk about mobile payments are competing with Rovio, the guys behind Angry Birds. How many of you play Angry Birds? So would you rather have mobile payment or Rovio? Sorry, Jeremy. Anyway, we'll see what we can do. All right, so let's, the, the other thing is the prizes. So if you're really nice and quiet, and we do a lucky draw at the end, there's a couple of good prizes. One from Bizu is a bottle of Montenegro. All right, a bottle of Montenegro. This is worth drinking all by yourself in that back room over there with the dancers, if you're male. Uh, then we have, we have YouTube. What's YouTube given us? Where they gone? YouTube has given us collector's items, signed by... YouTube t-shirts. They're not signed by Larry Page, but I'm sure Anthony can sign them for you later. YouTube t-shirts, right? So you can see we're very organized. And also... What's that? An Android phone? Oh, really? Android USB key, right? So be really nice and ask good questions. And then finally, the top prize is a ticket to this, worth around 900 US. All right, gonna do a lucky draw at the end. So let's get into the interview. Could I ask you to shh? A little crowdsource shh for those of you who want to listen. I have a lot of people who come to me and say, you know, I really appreciate you telling people to shut up because I actually came here to listen to the speaker. So if you want to listen to the speaker, come forward. There's some chairs. Yeah. So we're going to start off, it's YouTube, it's video. So we're going to start off with a little video that Anthony put together himself, right? A little video with a bit of sound. We've got the sound plugged in. I hope so. The internet is a completely different culture, isn't it? You said it. Everything here is immediately followed by sarcastic comments and nasty responses. Yep. We're finally where we belong. <laughs>
Anthony because he's French and we have we're honored with the presence of the French internet mafia in our in here Nicolas Olivier from Wall Street Journal anybody else who's from French and works for the internet do you know Loic Le Maire so Olivier uh, from AFP introduced me to Anthony he said there's a guy I know from uh, Utu maybe you want to meet him so we have Anthony from Utu who's here to talk to us uh, and what, one of the things I want to ask you first is, what is it like to work for YouTube? Is it, is it, why are you wearing a suit? Usually I don't wear a suit, I wear a suit tonight. Hey, can you, Tony, can you switch to the other one with the logos? So, uh, what do you actually do for YouTube? What, what's your job? So, um, actually I've recently moved to, uh, to Montreal. Yeah. Speak up. Speak up. Speak up. I recently moved to Hong Kong uh, three months ago to head up partnership for uh, Greater China and Southeast Asia as well as YouTube Music for the Duo Region. So basically my role is to uh, try to convince uh, media companies to come on board and put their content on the platform and then we uh, share the advertising revenues. So the model is pretty straightforward. So when we launch uh, YouTube End of 2005, the main objective of YouTube was to help user sharing personal videos. This was the main objective. Now we have 20,000 partners uh, on board across territories, uh, like broadcasters, uh, publishers, news organizations, music record label, and so forth. And these partners have, uh, have different objectives. So that's basically my job, to convince those guys to come to the class. Do you report to Larry Page? I don't. Who do you report to? Who's your boss? My boss is, uh, is based in Singapore. Uh, Singapore. <laughs> so, you talk about music. There was a few, some cool videos of music. Have you got any music partners in Asia at the moment? So, so we have partnership with all the, the majors. Uh, as you probably know, we were behind uh, the Vivo initiative in the US. So we partner with, uh, with Sony. So Vivo, explain Vivo. So Vivo is uh, similar to Hulu, but for music. Uh, so it's a, it's a platform for music videos. So we are the, the, the technical provider of, uh, of Vivo. So basically we have a partnership with, with Vivo. So they provide also their content on YouTube and we have also a partnership with Warner Music. And we're also working directly with most of the music record labels around the world as well as the Music Collection Society. So isn't it hard in Asia? How many of you go to YouTube and watch music? My experience is in Asia that people like pirated stuff, right? So, especially in Malaysia and China. So, how is YouTube going to come into the market and, and tackle that? How, how are you going to deal with the whole issue of people want, getting used to downloading stuff for free from somewhere else? Well, I, strong, I, you know, I strongly believe that YouTube can be a good alternative to Paris because most of the content is there for free. So, the business model is based on advertising. So, users don't have to pay anything to get access to the content. So they can watch any kind of content for, for free. So we take, we take actually piracy very, very seriously. So as you probably know, users can also upload some unauthorized content on the platform. So 
in order to tackle this issue, we decided to create technology called Content ID uh, in October 2007 in order, you know, to, to give rights holders the opportunity to take control of their content on the platform. So let's say user is uploading a video on the platform, then a rights holder can use this technology to whether block this user for the videos or to monetize. So they can really leverage the community aspect of the platform and uh, monetize those videos. So you, went, you mentioned the word monetize. Yeah. How, how do I, as a content owner, monetize? I had a meeting recently with a very big American content owner, and they don't think they can make enough money from the internet. They don't trust the internet. They, they can make so much money from TV rights, 20 million, 30 million, selling it to a TV station. How the hell is the internet going to supplement that? Yeah, so we have, our core business model at Google is definitely advertising. So 98% of our revenues are coming from uh, advertising, the same for, for YouTube. So basically, um, we leverage our own uh, ad sales team in order to monetize the YouTube, uh, YouTube platform. Um, we recently launched a new business model, which is kind of, you know, innovative for Google because we are more in the advertising business than on the transactional business. We launch uh, in the US a transactional VOD uh, platform, um, and this this uh, this platform gives the opportunity to rights order to basically um, offer their content on a pay basis. So basically, this is the Google TV stuff. That's different. This is a, a specific section on YouTube where people can go and rent a movie for let's say 24 hours by paying 99 dollars. So you're competing with Netflix. Yeah, it's kind of similar. We are entering into the transactional, uh, transactional business. And are people buying? Yeah, people are buying, and uh, also the same service is available across devices. So it's not only on PC; it's also available on mobile, tablets, and, and TV as well. So our main objective is to uh, give the opportunity to the end user to get access to YouTube uh, across devices. Do you think that model will work? For example, Hulu. Hulu was launched with great fanfare, it's cooperation between lots of content owners, and now they're trying to sell it. So, because of rights issues, delaying rights. Do you think, are you trying to replicate or do a better job of, than Hulu in Asia? Is that the idea? Because there's no Asian Hulu. The market's far too disparate. How are you trying to deal with it? So, I don't think that we can really compare the YouTube platform with Hulu because the business model is different. Uh, our main objective is to, to be a comprehensive video destination. So uh, we don't want to target only uh, professional produced content, but also uh, content produced by the, by the end user. So basically, we want to find the, the, the good balance between, between the two. So we can target major companies such as Warner, Sony, Disney, and so forth, but we are also working very, with very small independent producer all also a uh, very small user that can also produce content and can challenge major networks. So you, your offer is I can help distribute your content globally and I will take a cut of the uh, ad revenue, is that the deal? Yeah, exactly. So when we sign a partnership with let's say a broadcaster or even uh, a hand user, then we sell advertising against this content and we split the revenues uh, with, uh, with our partners. So the kind of advertising we sell is basically display advertising. So banner advertising we put on the right hand side of the video. And also video advertising, pre-roll or in-video ads. And we sell this kind of advertising on a CPM basis, which is cost per term. So you came from Europe and you've been how long in Asia? Three months. Can I have a quick crowdsourced? Shh. That's so nice. That was sweet. Um, three months. What culturally, in the terms of you know what people are using YouTube for, or the kind of content that's popular here, as opposed to Europe, is there a big difference, or is it still the same thing? There is not a big difference. I can say that music is very popular across territories, and the reason why music is very popular on YouTube is because people tend to watch music videos over and over again, and music is global. So basically, you can watch you know a Madonna video, for example, from any kind of territories. So that's the reason why you know, music is very popular popular on YouTube. So I don't see any kind of really 
real difference in Asia compared to Europe and, uh, and, and, and the US. So you're doing deals with the Asian uh, record labels like Emperor Group, you know, all, all the mafia in Hong Kong? So we, we, uh, we actually have deals with major record labels, Warner Music, Sony Music, Universal Music, and those guys have subsidiaries in, in Asia. So part of our global agreement we have with, with them, they also upload local, uh, local music videos. And of course, we, uh, we can sign agreement with companies such as Empor, East Asia, and so forth. So tell me a bit about access. Nowadays, um, I've been reading a lot about mobile stuff. Do you, from your, your experience, is in Asia, is there a difference in terms of access to YouTube uh, from the way that people access it? Is it mostly through mobile as opposed to uh, desktop? Well, well, share some numbers with us. So it de actually it depends, on, it depends on the territories. But what I can say is that globally, mobile, uh, mobile usage tends to increase a lot. Just to, just to give you some number here, uh, we sell more than 3 billion videos per day. 3 billion? Uh, 3 billion per American day. American billion. Yeah. 3,000 million. Right? 3 billion. Yeah. And, uh, and we sell 200 million uh, videos per day on mobile devices. So it could be on smartphone or tablets. And it tends to increase a lot. Tend to increase a lot. And is, is the content that people are accessing on mobile different from the content they access on desktop, so I think I think the, the, the content is quite is, is quite similar. So what we try to do is to keep the same user experience uh, on PC, but also on mobile and also on TV. So what we try to do is to be available everywhere across devices. For example, a month ago we announced an agreement with Xbox. So basically, YouTube is now available on Xbox. And uh, we try also to be on smart TV as well, so we have an uh, agreement with most of the TV manufacturers around the world. So what, in terms of number, I can tell you that YouTube is uh, now available on 350 million devices around the world. And in Asia? You know? Unfortunately, I don't have the speed in Asia, but we are working a lot with Asian manufacturers like LG, Samsung, and so forth. And also remember, HTC was one of the first partner of uh, Android. Okay, so let, let's talk about localization. One more crowdsource. This works really well. I used to swear, now I just go shh. Right, you're all growing up. So am I. So, um, tell us about the local ploy. I mean, in, in Asia, you have local versions of YouTube in, in how many countries so far? So, so when we launch, uh, I mean, when we acquire YouTube in uh, end of 10, 2006, one of our first decision was to launch uh, YouTube International. It was very important to us to make uh, YouTube available everywhere in the local language with local content and so forth. So basically, now we have 30, I think 30 localized version of YouTube. Uh, in, in Europe, in Latin America, in Asia, and in, in Asia we have seven uh, localized version, and so that's what Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Australia, New Zealand, India, South Korea, Japan, and the few more missing is India. Oh, good. So, um, so as you can, uh, as, as you can, not Singapore. So we are not available in Singapore, Philippines, and and Malaysia, and basically one one of the priority in Asia is also to to make available YouTube in those, in those markets. What I mean by making YouTube available in those markets, I mean uh, creating a, a version of, of YouTube in the local language, plus with a local page where we can push uh, local content with a team on the ground in order to sell uh, local advertising and do some local marketing initiatives. What I mean by localization. Do you think uh, the Chinese players like Youku uh, and Tudou will expand out of China and try and eat some of your your pie in the rest like Taiwan or Hong Kong? So we are we are actually experiencing some competition from a company such as To Do in market, in Chinese speaking market such as Taiwan. Uh, even though YouTube is leading the game in Taiwan, we can see that To Do is increasing. And uh, yeah, definitely I think uh, in, in the Chinese world, uh, those players can definitely, uh, definitely compete with uh, with YouTube, but what we try to do, even though we are banned in China uh, since April 2009, uh, it, it doesn't prevent us, you know, to secure some content from China 
in order to help Chinese companies to export their content abroad. So that's what we are trying to do because YouTube is a global platform and we definitely think that there is an opportunity for all these Chinese companies to target uh, a global audience. Uh, think about you know, the Chinese diaspora, it's 50 million people globally, it's a fragmented you know, audience. So there is no way with traditional broadcast to, to target this audience. So with YouTube, we can really target this audience in a cost-effective way. So I have a question about myself. I'm an amateur content producer. I set up a YouTube channel, and I'm still limited to 20 minutes of content. Why? I mean, in, in Hong Kong, there's lots of content providers, right? Lots of amateur people who make videos, shows, whatever. Why, why is, that, is, is that limitation artificial, or am I just not understanding the platform? I'd like to explain why we put this limitation. The, uh, at the beginning, you know, when we uh, when we launched YouTube, the limitation was 10 minutes uh, because we wanted to avoid, you know, having a user uploading a full length movie on, on 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 YouTube, and uh, and also I can imagine for you know bandwidth issue and so forth. But now we raised this uh, this limitation, and for our partners, there is no limitation at all. So um, we launch a program called the YouTube Partner Program giving users the ability to become uh, a partner by signing up online. So when you sign up online, then you can monetize your content and there is no limitation. So you can basically decide to upload a full-end show or a full-end movie with no limitation at all. This is, this is because you have the content ID to protect the real content owners, right? Correct? Yeah, correct. Do we have any questions from the floor? Oh, we do. One more crowdsourced. Nice, sweet. I don't have internet access, so I'm not going to take anything from uh, from Twitter. So let's have a question from the floor. If you ask a good question, you might even get a YouTube t-shirt. And you can decide whether it's a good question. You've got to make them cry, laugh, or look extremely nervous to be a good question. Are you finding that um, advertisers... Closer, closer. Do you find that marketers in Hong Kong are using the branded channels in YouTube, and if so, are consumers going there and engaging? So are, are, are advertisers using branded... Are advertisers in Hong Kong, for you at the back, using branded channels? And is it effective? That was a question, right? Good question. Is that a good question? Is it a good question? Did you get a t-shirt? Yeah, I think so. T-shirt. <laughs> So you, Adverti advertiser can definitely you know, uh, use the YouTube platform in order to interact with the, with the YouTube community. And what basically we are offering to them is to uh, create a YouTube channel. But it's also important, you know, for uh, for them to be able to add their content discovered on the platform. So basically, what we're offering them is a full package where they can add their on the channel discovered and on their content is uh, If you think about the you know, the YouTube platform, we have 48 hours of content uploaded every single minute. So for advertisers to perform on, uh, on, on the YouTube platform, the basic, it's important you know, to have a strong, uh, strong marketing, uh, marketing plan. Isn't, and, that, isn't that why you're localizing? So a local advertiser can target a local audience? Isn't that the whole point of your localization yeah. from an advertising perspective? Yeah, definitely. definitely. We can target a local advertiser and those advertisers, of course, can target the local market, but they can also target the global audience if they want to. Another question. T-shirt or a USB, depending how good the question. Uh-oh, he works. He's in a suit. Be careful, he's in a suit. I'm not sure it's a T-shirt question. Just to find out a little bit more about uh, Google TV and YouTube, I know YouTube is uh, devising formats for TV, Google TV is of course all about the TV. What's the difference and are, are the two going to come together at some point in the future? Google TV and, uh, and YouTube are two, two different products. Uh, first, goes Sorry, isn't that like Jane Fonda and Ted Turner? They came together <laughs> and then they fell apart. Yeah. One more crowdsource, shh, for him to answer the question. Thank you. So, what's the difference between Google TV and So, YouTube? Google TV is an operating system. So, uh, Google TV is basically Android for, for TV. Uh, so, this product is only available in the US. 
And uh, as you probably know, for the launch, we partner with companies such as uh, Sony. So basically, some of the Sony uh, connected TVs have um, uh, Google TV embedded in it. So, and YouTube can be also on TV, can be also included in, in Google TV, but YouTube is not an operating system. So, by la launching or by launching Google TV, our main objective is to make um, video and program discoverable. So, because uh, as you probably know, um, it's very difficult to find a uh, good program on TV because uh, there is a lot of channels, more and more channels. So. Uh, the consumption tends to be very fragmented, so it's very difficult to find what you want. And, uh, and specifically now that you have more and more catch-up TV uh, websites. So what we want to do with Google TV is give the opportunity to the user to find easily what they want to watch. Can I ask a question? You made a good point, which is there's too much content. A lot of the internet now is becoming about people filtering content for other people. Right, so people filter Twitter because it's full of so much content. They filter content. So do you think in YouTube what will happen is there will be like Uber, Uber filters who will basically set up their own channel of recommended content? Yeah, I think this is a trend. It's actually a very good question, so you can offer a t-shirt to yourself. Uh, <laughs> so this is a... This, the, the trend we saw, you know, at the, the beginning of YouTube was online creators, like end user, you know, creating uh, content for the for the YouTube platform, becoming very popular. Now we can see some um, creator going to the platform, and basically their job is just to show they don't produce content and show some good content. So they basically retweet content on YouTube. Absolutely. Sorry. Jay, Jay, you could, here's an opportunity for you, Jay. Jayoway.com, YouTube, retweet. Right, wait, 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 let's finish. Alright, question from Jay Oatway. Good question. Follow up. Alright, so, so to build up this curation idea that you've got, um, there's some talk now going on in Google that Google Plus Hangouts, maybe we can start watching some YouTube Live, and there may be a reemergence of friends being able to sit around and watch TV together which is something we haven't had in a long time. Could you elaborate a little bit more on, on how something like that could happen? You are such a geek. <laughs> how many people hang out on YouTube, on good circles, and, and watch videos together? Ask Pam, ask Pam, ask Pam. Ask Pam. Ask Pam. Ask Pam. All right, all right, sorry. Good is that a good question? Yeah, is that a good question? question. T-shirt or USB? USB. Uh, T-shirt, T-shirt. No, he wants to know what the USB is. USB, sorry, man. T-shirt. All right, T-shirt. So I, I, I'm going to reply to the first part of the, of the question. So, as you probably know, YouTube is all about uh, video content, so video on demand, video that you can share with your, uh, with your friends. And we recently launched uh, a new functionality which basically allow any kind you know, of partner and, uh, and user to also live stream some event on YouTube. So uh, this is new, this has been launched like a couple of months ago for basically all kind of, uh, of partner. Uh, just to give you an example, we've, uh, we actually live streamed uh, the Royal Wedding on YouTube, we also live streamed the uh, Indian Premier League, and you, you will see more and more. Who, who watched the Royal Wedding, the British Royal Wedding, on YouTube? You can put up your hand. So, I did. So, who, who watched the British Royal Wedding on YouTube? A Frenchman, what's British Royal Wedding? Ça claque, salaud. Anybody else? The waiter watched. Uh, excellent. Brilliant. So now that's interesting. So the live streaming element. Is it hard to set up live streaming on YouTube? So it's a, it's a, it's a self-service functionality. So basically we just need an a RTMP feed and then we can rebroadcast the event. So we take all the technical costs. So yeah, but, but Jay's question, Jay's question was more about Google is is Google Hangouts creating, simulating the idea that you're sitting around on a sofa or like watching a sports event together, or you know, so you're all hanging out, you're watching the video, you're commenting. Is that do you see Google Hangouts going that direction? So I think you know I see YouTube becoming uh, more and more social. So of course YouTube is a, is a is also a community platform. Um, 
but I think we will uh, do more and more in order to make the platform more uh, more social. Social. So definitely, uh, watching a live streaming event and uh, sharing uh, thoughts with friends is definitely something we uh, we could do. And uh, we recently, you know, integrate YouTube with uh, with Google Plus. So this is a social aspect here. Yeah. So, so one more crowd so Shh. I've got. I've got uh, two Android USBs and I've got uh, tickets to Broadway cinemas from Jigo City. So if you've got any good questions, you can go and see a film or you can hang out with Jay and copy stuff onto your USB. Any questions? Casey! Casey, come on, stand up, you've got a question. Casey, don't be rude, don't be shy, you've got a question. Huh? He's been drinking. Okay, who's got a question? Who wants? Ah, oh, here we go. Wait, ladies first. Um, it might be too early, um, but there's a lot of user-generated content done by remixing um, popular content excerpts of it. Is YouTube going to talk about facilitating that platform of content eventually? Like, um, the re you know what I mean by remixing and Generated, you know, clips to create some new product from what's already there. Not necessarily piracy, but you know, the, the, the Dennis kid who has been remixed a million times. It's a, it's a very good point because. So, I have questions about mashups, right? Yeah. A bit like the music. In the music industry, you have a lot of uh, people who do mashups of other people's music. A, so, is, is there a big culture of. Yeah, and there is in China, I know, a big mashup culture. We have, uh, we have a lot of, you know, users doing mashup, cover version of songs. So uh, this is actually a very strong user on, on YouTube. And so the reason why also we decided to launch... Uh, so I know the crowdsource... Shh. Thank you. The, the reason why we decided to launch Content ID was to give the right order the opportunity to make money with this kind of mashup. So let's say a user is doing a mashup with a Lady Gaga video and a Madonna video then we can split the revenues uh, with the right order. Uh, so Lady Gaga is universal and uh, Madonna is Warner Music, then we can... We can uh, how do you do that? Because like, say the mashup is 20 minutes and there's like 2 minutes of Madonna, 3 minutes of Lady Gaga. Do you do it by time or by... how do you work? We have this uh, fingerprinting technology. We need uh, to get the reference files from the right order in order to be able to match with the files uploaded by the user. So to take the example of a mashup from a you know Lady Gaga video and a Madonna video, then you, we can you know share the revenues with the rights holder as long as we identify the file. And in order to identify the file, we need to have the reference file in the wallet database. So if I do a voiceover of a Lady Gaga song, do I have to pay rights? Like a cover version? Yeah. So we manage all this rights issue for you. So uh, let's say you upload a video on YouTube, uh, Napoleon singing on his shower Lady Gaga song, then we can identify this song and share the revenues with the right holder. So you don't have to do anything, we do this on your behalf. So we, we pay the, the music record level, but also the music collection societies. All right, the, does anybody know the music collection society name in Hong Kong? They've got a great acronym. Yes. Cash. This is cash, right? Yeah, what does it stand for? Association of Music. I don't know. Is that a good question? Does she get a USB yeah. and a, two tickets? Yes. Two tickets to the cinema. The composer. Which you can record and put on YouTube later. And USB to help you transfer it. All right. Do we have any more questions? Oh, we do. We do. We have more USBs and we have more questions. Here you go. Around um, you know face recognition software and that type of thing, going back to the privacy question and or the future is like if I put something up on my voice under someone else's uh, name, is it going to be technology that's going to be tracking my voice recognition and tying a here's this user in this video based on who that person is and tying it into an individual? Or so is it going in the voice recognition side of uh, the videos? This bloke's paranoid, don't worry, he's paranoid. So, voice recognition, I know YouTube for a while, there was a service where you could you could take YouTube videos and they would automatically convert it to text, right? 
transcribe. So there was an automatic transcribing service. And, it, and then you had Google search doing voice search stuff. So obviously Google has the technology to recognize voice. So your question was, would you be able to pay somebody for the rights of their voice? Is that the question? Yeah. So in, in the case of you know, uh, Content ID, which is, the, which is this fingerprinting technology, and this is exactly the same, the, the same issue here. Um, so when we recognize a video of someone singing, let's say, a Lady Gaga song, we give him the opportunity to whether take down the video or to keep the video up. So this is actually the user choice. So we don't actually force the end user to keep the video up on YouTube. That is, that, is that what you were asking? And you were asking... Is the technology there to do the recognition of an individual's voice in the entire video somewhere else? Yes. Uh, okay, so if you put somebody's voice on another video, could you split the voice channel and just content ID the voice channel, not the video? So if you're somebody, if you're a voice artist, or whatever, musician, can you split off the voice part? Not just the visuals, but the voice. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Sorry, a quick crowded shh. So content ID has two parts. One video part and one audio part. So we can uh, identify the audio part and share the advertising revenues with, let's say, the music creator level and identify the video part and share the revenues with the, the, the film studio. So content, content ID is basically two different technologies. One audio technology, similar to the one used by Shazam, and one video technology. So I have a question. If you recognize the voice part, will you provide that information to the American government? <laughs> <laughs> or, or the Egyptian government? Huh? Is YouTube like Google? Do you subscribe to them? Do no evil. Do no evil. Are you do no evil? We, we are not a separate company, so yeah. No, do no evil. Okay. The same, uh, the same uh, one more statement. question. It's getting very loud. One more crowdsource. Shh. Then we'll have a lucky draw. Uh, Glenn. No. Glenn. Angie. Uh, can I have the name cards, please? Name cards to the front. All right, three more questions. I can see three hands. We have one USB and we have lots of cinema tickets. So, we got a question. Oh yeah, sorry. Sorry, was that a good question? It was kind of good. It was kind of good. I'll give you free tickets. You don't get a USB, sorry. You can have free tickets. All right, whilst I'm giving you the tickets, we can have a question. So, you're banned in China, as well as your parent company is no longer really a friend of the Chinese government, we all know. So is part of your mandate coming to the region to re-establish the YouTube brand in China? Is it, is it, obviously it is the biggest opportunity in the region, so how does China figure into your plans arriving here in APAC? Can I ask a question? Do you work for a competitor of YouTube? No. no. First of all, that's a good question. Um, So my Sorry, one crowd, so shh. You're getting loud again. Shh. So as you know, we are banned in China since April 2009. Uh, there is some, you know, uh, big companies in China like Yuku or Todo. So basically, what we we want to do, that's actually one of our priority, is really to uh, help all these Chinese rights holder, like CCTV, Shanghai Media Group, and so forth to export the, the content abroad. So basically we target the international market as opposed to the domestic market. And we think that we can give them the opportunity to generate uh, incremental revenue, revenue stream. So that's actually our plan. Uh, and uh, we actually did the same in, uh, in India. Uh, in India we are working with building uh, with film studios in order to help them reach the global audience or sports organization. Just to give you a concrete example, we, um, we work with the Indian Premier League in order to live stream this event on YouTube. And we managed to reach more than 70 million people uh, globally. Who's Most a cricket fan? Cricket fans, hands up. Casey, yeah! I didn't know you liked cricket. <laughs> You're Canadian, you should like... What do you like? Like ice hockey or something? Hockey! hockey. So, you know, the, the China is laced up by Chinese companies, so he's helping distribute it outside, right? Yeah? 
All right, we have two more questions. I saw two hands over here. And how does the popularity of videos drive your advertising goal? The first question is, what's the most popular video in Hong Kong right now? Can you repeat the question? What is the most popular video in Hong Kong? I'm not going to ask him because he's French. What is the most popular video in Hong Kong at the moment? Does anybody know? Adeline. <laughs> Casey, what's the most popular video in Hong Kong at the moment? <laughs> not Bus Uncle. Do you know what the most popular video in Hong Kong is? I don't know. Does anybody know what the most popular video today is in Hong Kong? What? Go on, Casey, tell us. Charlie bit my finger. Yeah, Charlie. Charlie bit my finger. His two brothers playing it. Yeah. I think we need to check. Can you check from your mobile or? Yeah, Jay, get in there. Get in there, Jay. Got you. Got you on there, Woo! Jay, our Uber geek has us on YouTube. Alright, you can't answer that question, but you have access to the internet. Can you go and check out youtube.com.hk and it will tell you now. The second part was... Yeah, usually we, usually we target um, by demography or by content category. Okay, sorry, sorry. We have uh, our, our research department in the back here. I told us the most popular video on YouTube Hong Kong is no one there. Neo Cube. No one Neo there. Cube. What's it about? What, can you play it? No one there. Play it. Play it. Play it. Put it on. Play it. Sorry, we we'll lose sponsors. Sorry, the technology. We got two laptops. We can't play it now. Do it on your mobile phone. Later, mate. New venue. Takes time. Settle down. I'm working it out. Set, settle down. All right. Uh, and one more question. That was a kind of okay question, so you get tickets. Well, one more question. One more question. All right, all right. Ah, uh, we got one more question. This is regarding advertising with the ad format. And um, I know that in the US, um, you did something like with Tim X that, like, um, localizing it for TPEX brand. So I'm just wondering like in Asia would you do similar ad formats like customizing it for brands rather than your usual like you know pre-roll videos and stuff like that. Did you mention the TPEX example? Yeah. So basically the this is a this is a good example and uh, so sorry the most popular is Stella Rocket Girl, right? <laughs> Classic Hong Kong. Stella Rocket Girl is the most popular or um, the uh, Japanese earthquake as seen from underwater. <laughs> Translated from Chinese. Sorry, go back to. So, yeah, the, the, fo the, form the format was very innovative, but the, the innovation came from the agency and from the advertiser. So, we <coughs> basically. Oh, sorry, what was the format? I don't what What was the, what happened? It's a, it was a kind of TPEX. Uh, so you for TPEX on the, you know, on the YouTube page. So you paint tipex of the videos? What do you do? Similar, similar. But they use the masthead in order to create their, uh, their, their advertising. So basically the technology was not really innovative. Uh, the, most of the innovation came from the, uh, the creative agency. This is something that we can easily do on, on, on YouTube in Hong Kong. So it's not something that we did only uh, in certain territory. This is available everywhere. Everywhere where we basically sell advertising, uh, advertising on, on YouTube, it depends on the, you know, the innovation of the creative elements. All right. So can I, can I uh, just want to? We're going to end the interview here. So a big round of applause for Anthony. He did a great job. Thank you. That's again. And and uh, you can talk to him later. But we're now going to do the lucky draw.